Studying the history of art brings so much of the world around you alive. Being able to appreciate the history of human creativity is empowering. Case in point are the magnificent Gates of Paradise by Lorenzo Ghiberti, a copy of which stand here at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. This copy came from gelatin molds of the 15th century original made during World War II and brought here in 1964, thanks to the efforts of C. Julian Bartlett, Dean of the Cathedral, and the generosity of the local Fields family. Impressive even in photographs, it's up close that the technical virtuosity and enchanting details come alive, proof of the resourceful imagination of their creator, Lorenzo Ghiberti. The originals are a functional and decorative feature of the ancient and beloved Florentine baptistry and, displayed as they are in such a public place, they have been an influential monument to the creativity and intelligence of the Italian Renaissance ever since. Bronze doors with relief panels already had an ancient pedigree in Europe by the time Ghiberti made these, and he knew they would be compared to earlier examples, including ones he made himself just a few years earlier. With a cultural and artistic flowering taking place all around him, Sparked in part by a fascination with classical art and literature, Ghiberti was able to tap into the growing optimism of human potential in his beloved Florence. Dividing the doors into ten square panels flanked by prophets, here Ghiberti illustrates stories from the Old Testament with grace and clarity. He begins with God blessing a sheepish, sleepy Adam while helping him to his feet, creation and wakefulness artfully compared. To the right is Adam, again, apparently having fallen back asleep. His body a gentle ark, as Eve grows from his rib, encased in a clutch of loving angels. Then the dark side of humanity emerges in the story of Cain and Abel, the world's first murder, brutally realized with Abel shown lying, vulnerable on the ground. The story of Noah features a fleshy, drunken Noah and his ashamed sons, two of whom walk backwards to cover him up. Here are Abraham and the three angels, the central one, Yahweh himself. The scene of the sacrifice of Isaac on the hilltop is a nod, compositionally, to Ghiberti's compatriot Brunelleschi and his earlier version of the sacrifice made when they were in competition years before. Then Ghiberti conveys the complex story of Abraham's grandchildren, Jacob and his younger twin Esau, whom Jacob was destined to serve by divine ordinance. Then there's the story of Joseph, viciously dumped into a well by his older brothers and sold into slavery, only to become the appointed governor of Egypt. Here, he frames his brothers by planting a stolen silver cup in Brother Benjamin's sack of grain. Later, he reveals himself to them, and they marvel at his success, supplicant and remorseful. Ghiberti loves the scenes set in cities, rendering the buildings with Renaissance clarity and order. In the next panel, Moses receives the Ten Commandments, perched on the crest of Mount Sinai, while below, his followers wait in anxiety. Notice the compositions are becoming more complex and filling up with people. Next comes Joshua, the successor to Moses, leading his people to the Promised Land with the Ark of the Covenant. In the background is the Siege of Jericho, the walls collapsing as they finish their seventh circle on the seventh day. Here's the shepherd boy, David, the future king of a united Israel, cutting off the head of Goliath while King Saul commands his troops in the background. And finally, in the last panel, the Queen of Sheba arrives to test the wisdom of King Solomon, her foreign retinue crowding in behind her, while the people of Jerusalem turn out to welcome and gawk at her procession. Here, Ghiberti signals the culmination of the panels with obvious order and balance. At the time these doors were created, Florence, like Jerusalem in the Old Testament, had achieved a stunning rise of wealth and international influence. It had become an intellectual center, home to one of the great libraries in Europe. And in 1439, an end to the schism between the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches had been announced there. In fact, the Temple of Solomon, as depicted here, very much resembles the interior of the Cathedral of Florence, which housed the council meetings. This artist, trained in the minutia of goldsmithing, was able to evoke the sweeping, bold strokes of an ancient epic story. A very human story that at times transcends its religious themes to become universally recognizable. If you look hard enough, you may see ourselves in Ghiberti's little figures.